Rising interest rates are straining a lot of homeowners. Financial planner Renee Ravello joins us now with advice on how to make it through. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Very well, thank you. So how do you do this? As you watch a lot of people, we're on invariable mortgage rates. They're seeing it climb and climb and climb. What do you do? Yeah, a lot of people are struggling with this right now, and you're noticing it with more houses coming for sale. And, you know, when I talk to people about their mortgage rates, I'm like, listen, if you're in a variable, maybe talk to your lender about locking in for one year and just grabbing a lower rate. You know, I've had some clients do this and they've saved anywhere between three and $600 a month in interest. And that's a huge amount of money. And in a year, you know, we'll see where the rates are at. I have no forecasts on that, but that's a great way for people to, you know, lower their monthly payments. Of course, consolidation is always great. You know, it might be time to think about a line of credit and consolidating some of those other higher interest debts that you have. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of people use high interest savings accounts. So if you're actually sitting on some cash, which some people do have, you know, high interest savings rates, we've got one in house that's 4.49%. You know, that's a daily interest, high interest savings rate. It's incredible what the rates are at right now. And I've also seen people who are, you know, thinking about retirement in a few years. And I'm like, why not think about downsizing now? You know, do the commute for a couple of years or maybe run through your financial cash plan for retirement and, and find out how much do you really need in retirement? Because maybe the downsize can actually happen now. And then if you downsize, you can actually have no mortgage. So that'll definitely free up some cash flow. And, and looking at, you know, starting to plan for retirement should be about 10 years out. So it's a good time to sit down with your financial person and say, hey, you know, how much do I need in retirement? And am I on track? And can I downsize my house now and maybe save some cash now until that time comes? And then, of course, we're heading into tax season. So, you know, make sure that you're talking to your tax professional and utilizing all the necessary tax deductions that you can get, because there's a lot of new ones out there. They're changing all the time. And, and you know, RSP season ends today. So, you know, get out there and do your last little contribution if you need to. But, you know, all these things will help you with some cash and, and help put some more money back in your po pocket mm -hmm. for uh, monthly. Now, what about people who are really strained, who, you know, maybe they've gone to their lender and it's like, no, you're stuck with where you are. Have, have you seen people not make mortgage payments? I'm, I'm a financial planner, so I don't see that, but I hear mm -hmm. about it from other people or through, you know, clients that have children that are really struggling and asking to borrow money from their parents. So there is an opportunity where if you were planning on helping out your children, that might be the time is right now to give them a lump sum of money and, and help them with covering that increase in cash flow that's required. You know, but even talking to them about locking in for one year, you know, just lowering that interest rate substantially can save hundreds of dollars per month. So just having a conversation with people about really just talking to their mortgage person and, and speaking about some of the alternatives that they might have to offer for them to lower, you know, monthly requirements on their cash. Because right now with the cost of groceries, the cost of utilities, everything's mm -hmm. going up and people are really feeling it. You know, right now they're and one of the biggest things is I always go back to this need versus want you know ask yourself when you're going to make a purchase is it a need or is it a want and can it wait six more months can you put it off that one purchase just six more months just to see what's going to happen you know and and just try to save some of that money that you would have you know discretionary spending so things that you don't have to pay you know maybe don't buy them right now don't spend money on that and just wait a little bit longer to see how things roll out Okay, and that discretionary spending could be like a cup of coffee in the morning, like bring it instead of of, uh, of buy it, right? Oh, absolutely. And honestly, people should look at their cash flow and the days that they're spending. So for example, you know, I have people collect receipts for over a month and then at the end of the month, I make them do it by day. And then they're like, wow, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I spend a lot of money. What am I doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Oh, I'm taking the kids to hockey and then I'm going out for dinner because of that. So that helps you plan that Tuesdays and Thursdays, maybe you should have dinner cooked from the night before so that it's leftovers and you're not doing the drive through dinners or, you know, um, Plan your gas a little bit better. You know, you go through a tank a week. What day is or what okay. time is the better time to get it, right? Okay. Renee, always great tips from you. And we'll get all your socials and your links up on our website, chch.com. Thank you. Thank you.